Hey to all my chiclet lovers. So excited to see you here today. We are here to talk about something really exciting. Tiffany and I have been giggling over this for 30 minutes already. So we just <laughs> decided to start recording. We are going to talk about how I messed up big times in bonbons to yoga pants. And I don't mean grammatically, I don't mean in story structure, but I mean like down in my heart, I feel like I have led you all astray and I've had guilt over this and Tiffany and I have talked about it quite a bit. So Tiffany, tell them how we know each other. Oh, Katie, first of all, I'm thrilled to be here with your Chiclet crew. I just read Bon Bon to Yoga Pants as well, and it is, it's quite a book. I used to be Lexi, <laughs> all the things. I can totally relate to all of it. So I met Katie last November at a business conference, Biz Chicks Live. We actually sat down to lunch together one day, and we also met upstairs in the lounge. I remember when I first met you, I'd just come from working out, and then we really dug in when we sat down to lunch, and you asked me what I did. And I told you I run this, Google, go ahead, please. I was say, when, you first, when I first met you, I was sitting with three other women at a table, and you walked in, and you were, you were like, oh, are you with Biz Chicks? And we're like, yeah, and you were working out. You're like, oh, I just did a quick workout, and I was like, check you out. And then you're like, oh, yeah, it's only 15 <laughs> minutes. I never work out more than 15 minutes. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, you were floored. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't, I was like, what? And then we ended up having lunch later, yeah. Totally. So that just rolled out of my mouth 15 minutes and you were just, because you've done all the workouts, you've done the weightlifting, you've done the cardio, all of that stuff. So I think when I say 15 minutes and I'm more ripped than I've ever been in my life, people don't believe it. It sounds like an infomercial. Yeah. I <laughs> used to do like those hour, two hour long workouts, try all the things, all the calorie counting. And I was literally <laughs> 20 fluffs heavier trying so hard. Plus, when yeah. I finally figured out this mind and body system, and that's actually fun, it was just mind blowing. So, yeah, and, yeah. So, and that's how I first met you. Is you're like, yeah, why mm -hmm. would you work out more than fifteen minutes? And I was like, I've never. Who are you? <laughs> who do you think you are? <laughs> just say yeah, that. you're lying. That's not real. It was awesome. Yeah. So ever since yeah. then, we I we sat down to lunch and we talked some more. I think a couple times through the course of the conference, and I ended up like enrolling to Jiver the Jiver Life program, which we'll talk more about later. But Tiffany and I, to I say, have talked at least every other week, <laughs> if not more often since November. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, at least every two weeks since November we've been mm -hmm. working together. And so when I told when I told you, I said, I think I have done a disservice to the women that read my book. Yeah. We were super interested because Tiffany and I dive mm -hmm. deep, right, about everything. And a lot of it has to do with food exercise in our relationship to myself. And mm -hmm. I told you, I said, in Bon Bon's yoga pants, I have Lexi's just starting out. So she's calorie counting on her phone and she's weighing on the scale and she's got all this angst about food and she's not necessarily eating intuitively and what she wants. She's just in that trench of, I have to stay with my calorie allotment. I have to work out because I have to be good enough. And by the end of the book, spoiler alert, she figures out that that's not why she's doing it. But so many of us have been there, right? We're looking back and we're saying, I've never totally. been good enough. Calorie counting will make me good enough. And my biggest fear and guilt here is that I'm encouraging women to calorie count when I don't mm -hmm. anymore think that's an effective tool for us to live our best life and to actually solve the problems because we're trying to force ourselves to eat stuff that doesn't feel or taste good just to meet an ends that will never happen because we don't actually believe in ourselves. <laughs> you know, like there's this whole spiral and you had a fantastic point that I wanted to share today when we talked about calorie counting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You want to go for it or me? You, you, it. you say it <laughs> Perfect. It. All right. So I can totally appreciate why you wrote the book the way you did. And I can, relate to it as well. And I'm so glad that that's how it came to fruition. That's why we're here. The deal with calorie counting or keto or fasting or the cabbage soup diet, carb whatever cycling. you might be doing, carb cycling, like yeah. you name it, or like maybe you figured out a way to magically do all of them at the same time. Maybe that's a thing. And you're vegan. I don't know what you're doing. I'm not here to say that you are right or wrong. And I'm in fact, not a nutritionist. What I will tell you is the only right way to take care of your body is by doing things that feel good. Right way to me means the way that feels good to you is the quickest path to make progress and progress that's sustainable. So if you're just doing that yo-yo thing up and down, calorie counting, in angst, doing all these different diets, 
That is the hardest way possible. And it's not sticky to your long-term goals. So long story short, if it feels good, you are on the right path. So if you love calorie counting, putting it in my fitness pal, literally analyzing everything you put in your mouth, like that is the way. Yeah. Do what you love. love If you love Mm -hmm. it and it feels good to you, that's the way. Because the last thing I want is to pass judgment on anyone that does calorie count because it feels good to them. Because maybe that's like a natural place or state for them. But for the most part, it just, for the women I've spoken with, it hasn't really worked for them. And it just wasn't intuitive to me. So (laughs) let's talk about the first call you and I ever had together. Because this, this kind of takes us right into there, into that angsty place. Oh my goodness. (laughs) You guys, this is so good. I just listened to it again. (laughs) Tiffany and I, my heart, connected like immediately because I wanted to know. I was um, a year postpartum and I, I told Tiffany that I felt like my body was a bowl of jelly because mm. I, my daughter, I call her warrior princess because I won't release my kid's <laughs> name on social media, but my daughter, had <laughs> WP, we call her WP, she was a really hard pregnancy. I was sick the entire time. I didn't even, I, I stayed my weight. Like I was just losing weight while I was pregnant with her because I couldn't, I just couldn't eat. And <laughs> what actually happened was I lost all my muscle. (laughs) And so after I was like, I'd had a kid before. I knew that your body feels different. But after my daughter, I was like, what has happened? (laughs) Like in this body, I have no idea what's going on. And I had two kids. I was running two companies and it was just a crazy time. So I didn't take time for myself. Right. So Tiffany and I, after the conference, we met on Zoom. So I, we mm-hmm. haven't discussed exactly what was said on that first call, but I'm dying to know what I said oh at that time because I was in such a nasty place. I was on the hamster mm-hmm. wheel. Totally. So it's only been nine months to root you all in where we've been. Nine months of doing this driver life dance. So on the first call, I first want to back up like, you all know Katie and you've been reading her novels. Like, you know, she's an absolute badass. So I would describe you Katie as an extremely talented, driven woman who knows where the hell she's going. Like Katie is on the path to growth. Now, when I first met her, she was on this path, we'll call it like a highway. She's on this highway to growth. But Katie was in this car that was probably like 15, 20 years old. The tires were kind of flat. The windows had dust all over them. And maybe you put diesel gas in the tank on the accident so you're in this car just like bobbing and weaving trying to go to the destination trying this workout that diet this thing that thing and frustrated so here you are a badass on the path to growth but feeling lost when it came to how to take care of your body yeah absolutely and so i met you in that state of frustration and like you literally said i feel like a bowl of jelly like I feel stuck. Honestly, our first call was riddled with why you couldn't work out. Yeah. The thyroid issue, which I haven't heard about in eight months or so or seven months. Yeah. So my I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is autoimmune yeah. thyroid. And I've been dealing with it for a decade now. And it runs in my family and all that stuff. So I knew eventually I'd I'd grapple with my thyroid. But until you said that, like just now when you said, Yeah, you talked about your thyroid all the time. I was like, I can't remember the last time I thought about my thyroid. I'm on medication every day. I visit my endocrinologist once a year. I let them know if I feel like it's off, but I literally haven't thought of it once beyond taking my meds every morning. Totally. And I immediately said to you, I was like, oh my gosh, I was using that as a crutch. And you're like, yes. (laughs) You literally froze when I said it right before we started recording. I said, your thyroid, you went for like 10 seconds. You're like, oh yeah, that was a thing. So I would say the thyroid would be like, like just like a big barrier in the middle of the highway that you just like stared at, right? You were stuck. You stopped the car. Yeah. Sometimes you would try to go around it, but then you get frustrated. Also with the thyroid was low back pain. I hear this from a lot of women. Oh yeah. That is a thing that you've learned how to manage. We've learned how to move better, how to sit better, how to alleviate it. Oh, so yeah. you were empowered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you went from this, I would say it was more important than even the body improvement and the strength that you've developed, but is really the internal dialogue. Oh, i.e. you're not stuck yeah. you have a path and tools to work to keep going forward on the highway you've like cleaned the windows put the good gas in the tank and you realize that the work is daily and you're doing it so that first call i would describe to your question is i wouldn't say stuck you said you wanted a better way because you were an angst trying all the things and you knew that if you got control of your body and maybe did a little mindset stuff 
that you could get to your destination yeah. in a faster way and in a more fun way. Well, and I remember saying to you, cause you're like, well, driver life is workouts, but it's also, it's also mindset. Like that's what makes us so mm -hmm. different. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I do meditation every now and then. Like I remember <laughs> total progressing, but uh, I was like, no, no, no. Katie, I built the meditation in. So it comes after the workout at first. And then I have some other ones you can do. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. But these workouts I'm super excited about. Like, I just remember being totally focused on the workout. Uh -huh. Like, I know this is totally what I'm going to do. Um, and I was, I was really excited about that, but then I didn't really give any I didn't even care about the mindset stuff mm -hmm. at first until you sort of gently nudged me along like no this is this is the most important part and my the people watching this that know me all will know that I'm huge on self-care and a lot of that has stemmed from last November after we met when I started driver life mm -hmm. because this is a perfect time to talk about one of our it's like our second or third call you gave the driver life mantra which is I come first mm -hmm. I love my decisions and I always forget the one I'm kind to myself. I'm kind to myself. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. I got a diamond. Mm -hmm. We're working on that one still. <laughs> you're, you're, you're killing it overall. But really, every woman, like, this is the mantra. This is the bullseye for a reason because we all deal with it. So again, I'm kind to myself. Yes. I, I put myself first. Mm -hmm. I am kind to myself. And I love my decisions. Like, that is the bullseye. That's why you've been successful is literally working the mantra. Yes. Well, so mm -hmm. you said that on the call. And you're, you're like, I, I come first. Like I, I put myself first. Yeah. I scoffed. <laughs> you scoffed with like in all caps. Like, yeah. Scoff, like hashtag uh, scoff. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, I, the first thought in my head was this woman doesn't have kids. She has no idea. I never come first, but you, mm -hmm. I was honest with you too. I was like, I don't know, Tiffany. I don't, I don't think that's yeah. true. And you pushed back <laughs> on me. You pushed back on me. And I was like, all right, all right, I'll try it. Like, I'll try it. Okay. <laughs> so whatever, uh -huh. I'll, I'll, I'll appease you. And that is when I started to realize, oh, I have to come first. Like I do come mm -hmm. first, first of all, and mm -hmm. I have to come first. And that mm -hmm. started rooting in once I actually started doing what you told me to do. <laughs> like it went on the path and started doing it. And I was like, oh, that's, I didn't actually believe it before, but now yeah. I'm starting to believe that I come first, that I need to be kind to myself and that I love what I choose and things mm -hmm. started to follow. Like not question for you. Yeah. Why do you know with conviction now that you have to come first? Oh, okay. This is a good one. And today's the perfect example. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so before when I didn't ever come first, I, it led me to you right? To the mm -hmm. bowl full of jelly feeling. And I was <laughs> eating uh, everything uh -huh. to feel better. And I didn't even realize mm -hmm. it. Right. So then after I listened to you and I started telling myself these things and actually, actually implementing them, like putting myself first so that I can serve my kids. Mm -hmm. The difference was like night and day within, I think a couple of days, I was like, Oh, wow, this is big. Mm -hmm. So for example, today, like this week, everything has just been like crumbling. Like babysitters are sick. Babysitters are canceling. Like families unexpectedly showing up, which is great. But the whole schedule has to rearrange. Like everything. It took my husband and I an hour and a half to like put our schedules into place so that we could help what needed to happen, happen. And it just has like slowly fallen apart a piece at a time. And mm -hmm. this morning I was super cranky. I, there's all this stuff going on. And I said, I have got what do I need right now? And my kids were yelling, they were fighting, the dogs were barking, like the house is literally in chaos. And I, this morning I just stopped and I was like, what do I need right now? And I was like, you know what? I need to put on my makeup and change out of my workout clothes and feel like I'm ready for the day. And mm -hmm. then I can deal with all of this. So that's what I mm -hmm. put myself first. I threw a show on my computer. I told my team that was waiting for me, Normally I would have a babysitter here, but I told my team, I was like, give me just a minute. And I turned the video off while well, they were asking me questions. I just got ready. And then I like took a second and I was like, okay, I am set. Now I can go into it. And, and I did. And I was able to turn my bad mood around and now like look into the rest of the day with like, okay, I got this instead of total dread. Like I have seven hours until bedtime. That's what I always yeah. think. Like, oh, yeah. I have eight hours until bedtime. <laughs> like, that was yeah. my biggest thought. But now I'm like, 
we can kill it. There's all this cool stuff we're going to do for the rest of the day because I put myself first. I love it. And ultimately your listeners, if they're reading your books and they're here, your readers, like they want to be better people. They want to show up for the people around them. Absolutely. They work for their friends, for their partner with all of this love and presence. Like I believe that 100%. Mm-hmm. So if I'm showing up with stress, anxiety, worrying about all these things, not sleeping, I'm putting myself last. If I'm showing up at 50%, I can't possibly love the people around me. Mm-hmm. So I believe if I put myself first, that is truly the most selfless thing that I can do because I'm showing up for everyone around me. Not I'm selfish not- at all. I'm actually doing it for you and <laughs> for me so I can be better. That's like, what you said. Wanna, that's totally. what you said in that call. And I was like, that is so bass backwards. Like that just doesn't even compute for me. But that is so good. I thought that because mm-hmm. I can see now it was like a goalpost. That's where I was. Totally. And, yeah. and now I can look back and say, oh, that's just where I was. Like I was just caught in it and I was on this hamster wheel. Wow. And you call it, so you basically say there's two states of being. There's resistance and there's flow. Mm-hmm. And when you live in resistance, everything feels hard. And when you live in flow, everything feels easy. And once you put labels to those for me, I was like, I could stop and be like, I'm in resistance. Why am I in resistance? And then take care of myself. Yeah. And whole family in house back into flow. And not just them, but my team. Totally. At work. My husband, like anyone that contacted me that day could feel the difference. It was amazing. It's and huge. It's yeah. Can we pause there? Yeah. Like if, if I never talk to your readers again, like the number one thing I want you all to leave with is that if you are in flow, like you are on the right path, if you are in resistance, i.e. stress, angst, if something is really hard and you're pushing against it, it's probably the wrong way. So it's asking yourself what feels better. Like I love to talk about like eating pizza. Like if I'm stressed about eating pizza, ah, I can't eat pizza. Oh my God. Versus like, I feel good about just eating two slices. So like, what can I do to get out of resistance and into flow? It's a silly example, but you get what I mean. It's, um, yeah, it's a perfect example. It's about feeling good with those decisions. We've been, it's truly like a societal thing where we think everything should be hard working out, taking care of our minds, taking care of our bodies. And then our mind, like we talked about this early on, our mind is riddled with squirrels, with noise. Like our, our mind is literally hardwired for stress mm-hmm. and to see what's wrong. So you take the hamster wheel of life and then you take the squirrel mind, all the rodents, the squirrel zipping around in our mind, that's fear, how we're naturally wired. And then the societal construct that losing weight, like working out, everything should be so hard. Like we're literally living in this trifecta of failure yep. like, to just be a bunch of Lexis, mm-hmm. like feeling like, ah, oh, this is so hard. So yeah, it, it doesn't have to be hard. And I know this sounds like you, a lot of you have probably heard like, oh, put myself first, self-care, all these things. But I know it's not easy like yeah. to find the time. So that's why this is such a game changer when we're doing it for 15 minutes a day and making it feasible versus yeah. like reading all the self-help books, doing two hour long workouts, yeah. meditating for days. Like it's got to be accessible for it to feel good. Right. It's got to be real. Mm-hmm. Like I, I still have kids to take totally. care of. I still have a, <laughs> I still have a life. Yeah. They're still here. Well, so the other thing that I loved about once I like got into the driver life world and I started doing the 15 minute workouts and the meditations was you never, you were never like, do this diet, do these specific workouts. You're like, I remember talking about it. I was like, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I want to work out today. You're like, great. Don't. And I was like, mm-hmm. what kind of a trainer are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it doesn't feel good. Don't do it. Like, well, you were trying to drive that. Stop. Yeah, like, why are you doing it? It doesn't feel good. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I have to. Yeah. So that was so different because you're like, you, you will take care of yourself and your body and you will get to your healthiest state and you will feel good about yourself, but not by staying in resistance. Like you have to go totally. to this better place and a higher mindset first, which is why you combined mindset and workouts in this like super easy to do like 20 minute a day thing, which is what totally Mm -hmm. where I'm at in my life. And then the other two most powerful things for me and probably for others is you encouraged me to write down positive affirmations and then have a gratitude journal. So what I did was I would wake up, this was all last winter. So I would wake up at four or five in the morning and I do Mm -hmm. just a five, 10 minute meditation that you had. And I would write down 10 positive affirmations and 10 things I was grateful for. And then I'd do my workout and then I would just start my day. It was this beautiful rhythm and routine. It's different Mm -hmm. now that it's summer, but 
you know, like it ebbs and flows, it all changes. But I think for me on a daily basis, those affirmations and the gratitude journal together, I just have it as a Google doc and I just have a bookmark and I just pull up and type it all out. That is something I've actually gone back to when I'm having a bad day and I'll just write those affirmations back down and write another list of gratitude. And that just recenters me. I think it probably mm-hmm. just pulls me back into flow, right? It just reminds me. Totally. So much to be grateful for. I am a powerhouse, right? Like I love my decisions. I come first and I have to remind myself that sometimes a couple of times a day. So it's really, you gave me tools to live my best totally. life. So you weren't yep. giving me tools like my fitness pal, which isn't bad, but that wasn't what you were giving me. You were actually saying, do this to find your center and your power within yourself and stop giving your power to everything else. I was like, mm-hmm. Gave you a bucket of tools and said, take them as it feels right to you to like make this car go faster in a yep. more deliberate way. And you also, a minute ago, you said, um, when you were in that muck, the muckety muck today with like your, your team was waiting, the family's going bananas. You said, I took a breath. Mm-hmm. So you said, you said a lot of what you're doing about with your mind, with the journaling and things. And then you also said breath. So that brings me to a point, like when we're thinking about what, how we can level up our lives everything's always rooted in three things to drive behavioral change, which is physiology, how we use and move our body, which was breathing or like the workouts we do. The mind's focus. You chose to focus on what was good, the gratitude and the affirmations. Mm -hmm. And the mind's framing. You don't use words anymore that tear yourself down. You're like, no, I got this. Yes. And it's like, I'm strong. I'm empowered. Not like I'm a bowl of jelly, right? Like you literally... Let me tell you what you said. This is, gosh, where is it here? I wrote them all down. You were using the words overwhelmed, frustrated, bowl of jelly, like feeling weak. And now when I went from your first call to your call, like five or six months later, you use the words grace, strength, confidence, and energy. Awesome. Like those are your daily words, your daily vibes, because we define our soul vibes. Like that's you now versus that being in that muck. I thought that was so moving. And before yeah. it was all about the workout. Now it's like everything all bundled together. Like you're souping up every aspect of your life by using those levers of change, which are just tools that I handed to you to drive your own damn car. Yeah. You're just like, you're kind of, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're not to fix your car. <laughs> and then I'm like, what feels good? So interesting too. We talked a lot. I was like, so how is diet and nutrition on our first call? And you said, oh, well, I'm, you said, well, I'm gluten-free and dairy-free and this free. And it, it's so funny. And like, now it's like, oh, if I have some dairy and this feels good, I do that. So it's interesting. We have these beliefs on what's right or wrong. And that rigidity, rigidity also drives more stress and angst. Like now our calls, you're like, I'm trying out gluten. Somebody said that. And I just bought into it. So it's about listening to our bodies and pausing. And then you're just cruising down the highway yeah. without the roadblocks or the beliefs that hold you back. Yes. It's, it's powerful. Well, yeah. For me, I think diet was just a, a method of, I talked to my therapist, Jen, about this, but she's like, what do you get out of this? Like when you're so restrictive, what do you get? And I was like, yeah. well, I'm doing something. Right. And she's like, oh, so is this a comfort? <laughs> and I was like, Jen, what? Yeah, you, I had to meet Jen. So I was like, what do you mean? Is it a comfort thing? And she's like, it sounds like you comfort yourself with the rigidity, the control, mm-hmm. because you feel like you're out Ooh. of control with your body. And so you comfort. That's big. Yourself. And I was like, <laughs> that is so big. I know. And that's like such a shift too. Like we hire a nutritionist or we buy this. I saw like the, like, but body boot camp blast. Like we bought the, buy these plans. We're like, this is going to work. I put all my money in this. Like it's, and then when it doesn't work, we're like, I tried everything. I tried that plan, but yeah. really the answer isn't in a plan. The answer is not in the outside. It's going, what feels good for me and pulling the different tools. So yeah, we find that comfort in going, I did this plan. Yeah. I follow the rules. I tried it. I did keto. We've never learned. We've never learned how to listen to ourselves. <laughs> you said on the call too, you said, you know, I've had a rough week and I was thinking about keto and I was thinking about fasting. And I know when I think about keto and fasting that something has gone terribly wrong. So I went back to my journal to figure out where the resistance came from. Yes. I was like, <sighs> I learned that that was so a, good. A trigger. Like I learned that when I am, when I am thinking about going on a diet, I've been triggered. 
So yeah. as soon as the word keto comes in my mind, I'm like, what just happened? Like, what? <laughs> something just happened and I feel like I have to go on keto. And I can yeah. kind of analyze back and say, oh, this is why I'm feeling out of control. Or I feel like I need <laughs> comfort here. You know, totally. like, this is what's happening. But I've never been triggered in Jiver Life because it's all about like remembering that the power comes from within me instead of within a diet or some exercise or whatever. And yeah. like, let's be honest, I would not have stuck with it if I didn't have you as my community, right? Like I needed mm -hmm. you and like, you mm -hmm. kind of would talk to me and we talk about things, we talk through it. And you just remind me like, Katie, like last time we spoke, I think it wasn't too long ago. You said to me, you're like, I was like, oh, I've just, I've gotten out of the meditation habit. Like I really need to get back in and I, I just haven't yet. And I, you know, let's set a winning plan. And I'm doing all the other stuff. I'm just not doing the meditation. And you said, you know, when you meditate, you're up here and it's mm -hmm. so easy to look down and say, oh, it's so much better up here. But when you're down here, it doesn't really look that far up there. And it doesn't mm -hmm. seem like that big of a gap. She goes, but once you get up there, you'll remember it. And I was like, that was enough motivation for me. And then I got back into it and I was like, oh my gosh, she's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so totally to be real in that just like anything, there's ebb and flow in life but having the community of Jiver Life is really what's yeah. helped me remember mm -hmm. my own power and want to stay with it, which kind of takes us into this next part because you and I want to help create that community. <laughs> That's why yeah. I'm talking here today is I want to make sure that women know that there is a better path, regardless of what totally. you're doing now, because you're probably not mm -hmm. doing this and you don't even mm -hmm. have to do the workouts that Tiffany has, but this mindset stuff, this shifting your belief system, all that, mm -hmm. this is the better way. I've been doing it for nine months. I've never done any other thing in this world mm -hmm. for nine months. And you and I are like lifers in this together. Right? I told you, I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. a driver for life. So yeah, <laughs> the rest of my life, I will, I will be part of the driver world. So we have, we have something we want to offer to my people. So I'll let, I'll let you go into that. Yeah, totally. So driver life is truly my life's work. I mean, I've, been in the military. I've done that dance for a long time. I'm a reform management consultant. And I'm now an entrepreneur. Like my life has been really good overall. I've always been happy, but then I hit rock bottom and Jiver life. I'll be honest. It was not built for you. I built it from for myself when I was in a really bad place by consuming like literally hundreds of books from all the gurus on motivation, meditation, spirituality, yeah, you've read like you name them, Brene Brown, Glenn and Doyle, all the people. So I've taken all of the best of that and I've packaged it into driver life. Mm -hmm. And now truthfully, like I just want to get this stuff to the world because it's so simple yet so profound. And so what Katie and I want to do is make this really accessible. Like I realize the world is in a really unique place now with, with all of the shifts and the change with COVID black lives matter. So much is going on and we just want to give you these tools. Yep. So what we've done is we've put together a very accessible, experience for all of you because we know you want to learn and grow and what better like who better do it with than like katie and the rest of this community yeah. right yeah so we have a 15 day 15 minute experience for 15 dollars. essentially we will teach you i'll teach you the tools katie will be along my side alongside with me yep. going through her experience as well but we'll teach you the skills that Katie has learned and that I've learned to implement into your life immediately. So each day we'll hop on a Facebook live for 15 days, 15 minutes. We'll teach the skills for about five to seven minutes. And then I'll actually show you how to implement the skill immediately within that window. And then you get to play with that skill throughout your entire day. Yep. It's not additional work. It shifts how you are living and in, in that experience of daily life. So that's going to be going on on September 1st, and we would love to invite you to be a part of that experience. And at the end of the 15 days, what I can promise is that you will have a badass pep in your step, and you'll be equipped with skills to elevate your health, your relationships, and your career. And really, I think this is just us wanting to share this, right? Because both of us <sighs> just love the system, and, and it's changed my life. It is the source of so much of the content I put out about self-care and self-love mm -hmm. and, and doing what feels mm -hmm. good and taking care of yourself really kind of stems from Jiver Life. And so we just want this opportunity for everyone. So we, there's a, there's a sign up link we'll put here in the YouTube video or on my mm -hmm. website, it'll be in the email. Uh, so you can sign up anytime between now and the end of the month. Is that right? Yeah. Can I add one quick thing? Yes. 
we said $15. We don't care about the money. I just know if you put money into it, it'll probably be sticky and you'll show up. If there's any reason that you cannot pay the $15, there will be a link in there. You just email me, let me know. We'll figure it out. Don't care about the money. We just care about you showing up and it being sticky. And we're doing a little bit of a scholarship program too. So there will be some slots mm -hmm. available for people that because of events outside their control um, that just mm -hmm. can't pay the $15. I know you're out there. I've been there too. We'll have some scholarships that we're giving out to people. Um, yes. because this is not, this is not a profit thing for us. This is a, we, you need to put some skin in the game to really be in it. So that's something else you can email Tiffany directly and we'll, we'll kind of set you up with that whole scholarship thing. I will be there. My whole team at Casey writing will be there and I am pulling everyone in that I can because this is just so cool. And we are creating the community that you can really bond yeah. and, and move forward with after this, because everyone will be going through the same thing. And if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't, don't. And Tiffany will give you that permission. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like I'm doing this a little bit selfishly. And I think you are as well, because we just want to broaden our boost bubble and be around <laughs> badass women that want to learn and grow because it's a total blast. Yes. And when you surround yourself with people that are doing these amazing mm -hmm. things, you become more amazing. So we're, we're selfishly just trying to elevate ourselves <laughs> and totally. around us. Plus right now, this time in our world, it's really hard to see everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of us just feel helpless no matter what's happening. And I think one of the most powerful ways we can make an impact is to become better people ourselves because our light absolutely shines and makes a difference. If Tiffany hadn't been in the place she was, I would never have been so intrigued by her from the beginning and drawn to her and then hear myself so that we can spread our goodness in the world. And this is one way to find, to find that in yourself, that power, that goodness, that source of energy that you can share in the world and we can make the world a better place that way. I absolutely believe that is true. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. So links will be available for you. I'll be sending out reminder emails. Thanks for being here with us as we talk about Katie, how. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for writing these stories that women can relate to, for sharing your stories in such a vulnerable way. I mean, I can see myself in you and that is like, I get the chills saying yeah. that. I see myself in you and I know that we are not alone and like one plus one equals 87. So let's keep building this community yes, and growing okay. together. So thank you for, yeah. uh, for everything. Well, thank you for Driver Life, right? We'll get like yeah. all that here. <laughs> we can just keep giving to uh -huh. each other. I'm so honored that all of you are here with me and Tiffany and that Tiffany came. And email any questions you guys have and we will be talking to you soon.